Shut up, compressor. What's up, Jack Weasels? Matt here from Dugues Models, and welcome to another installment of the Black Basing 201 video series. This time out, we're going to be investigating the question of how do you black base black? Uh, and key to that is understanding that there are many different shades of black out there. You know, if you're painting, for example, an F5 that's been done up as a MiG-28 from Top Gun, it's just gonna be a straight up gloss black. So something like, you know, Guns GX2 or Tamiya TS-19, there are many gloss blacks out there that can get you just that uniform coverage. We're talking about things that aren't just that straight up glossy black. So think of the F-117 or the SR-71 or the U-2 or the X-15. Um, you know, we can bounce back and forth over all kinds of different aircraft, a lot of them uh, various stealthy-ish or, you know, reconnaissance-based U.S. aircraft, but they're out there kind of all over the world, too. And the thing that kind of joins all those together is, well, yes, they are painted black. It's not true black. It's not total black. It's a very, 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 very dark gray or, you know, different kinds of very dark grays or even different tonalities of black in the case of the X-15. You know, if you look at pictures of these things from, you know, they're sitting in museums, it's like there's gloss black and there's like a satin gray black and different tones and they really pull in visual interest as opposed to just spray bombing that whole thing black. But how do you tackle that? Well, I have to admit this is something I have not tried yet, so we're going to be entering the undiscovered country together on this. But I'm going to say straight up from the beginning that it's better to be putting black over other black than to be putting it over gray primer and have to deal with the whole cover the gray issue and all that. This way, at least there's some hope for tonal var variation going on. Um, that said, I'm a bit pessimistic that the, you know, the, tr the foundational process of the marble coat and the blend coat is really going to do much with various shades of black. And the reason why, uh, you know, let's refer back to, to my awesome chart here. So, you know, black is zero. It's the base of where we start with, with this primer. Over here is white at 100. Now, when you're dealing with the lighter colors, again, you know, lighter colors, you can exist in here, and it's all about bringing the contrast up from the black so that you're operating more in this range or in this range. With dark colors, you know, you're more in this range. With something that's almost black, you are literally like right here. So you have a very small window to really play with. That means that the marbling that you can do is going to be limited and how much it shows up is also going to be limited. That's not to say it won't work. We're going to give it a shot, but I'm kind of pessimistic on that front. Um, however, something I'm not pessimistic about is the ability to play with different shades of gray, different tones, or sorry, different shades of black, different tones of black across the surface. You know, picking out different panels in different tones and really varying things that way. And if you look at something like, you know, the SR-71 or the X-15 or the F-117, what really makes them stand out in terms of their weathering is that different panels, shut up compressor, different panels really either reflect light differently or show literally different types of black uh, in play. So just to illustrate how we can pull that off with paint, here is Mr. Paint's MRP5 black. This is just straight up black, nothing fancy about it. Now, that's all nice and well and good, but there are other kinds of black in play. So here is their MRP255 World War I Night Camo Black, which is a cool fucking name, isn't it? Anyway, check that out. That is also black, but it's, you know, you can see it's very definitely not the same as MRP5. Neither is tire black, which is, you know, looks straight up like a gunship gray or something compared to these other two. And 
NATO black. You know, again, this the NATO black has more of a brown green tone to it. This stuff seems to have more of a, a deep blue tone to it. So there's a lot of different stuff going on. And then of course, if we want to get really fancy, we can throw some matte black into it as well because sheen variants can do just as much as tonal variants when you're dealing with something like a black. Um, I actually worked through that when I was working on the Kitty Hawk AH1Z uh, a couple years ago. The cockpit on that thing is all black. You know, the seats, the consoles, the instrument panel, the combing on top of the instrument panel, the side, it's all black. Um, but if you think about it, the way that, you know, the the combing works versus the, uh, you know, versus the black metal of the instrument panel versus the black fabric of the seat, they're all very different and they all tend to either reflect light differently or just show up, you know, lighter or darker depending on the materials and even the paint and the fabric being used. So there is precedent in my background from, uh, from that for this many shades of black approach to make something that's black still visually interesting and more than just, you know, a, a single monolithic color across the entire surface. So anyway, enough rambling on my part. Uh, let's turn the camera around and start throwing paint at the Hellcat. Okay, so in the interest of discovery, we are going to do a side-by-side bake-off on this one. On this side, we're going to do picking out different panels and giving them essentially full coverage with different blacks. On this one, we're going to be doing marbling with different blacks. Now, my approach for the marbling and also for this side over here as well, we're going to marble with MRP5, Night Camo Black, and NATO Black. So these are all kind of different tones. There's the slightly browner, greener, the slightly bluer, and the straight up black. All of these are going to be blend coated with tire black, which is a nice deep gray. So, you know, thinking on some of the lessons learned from the Hilo Drab interestingness, going from darker to lighter tones overall seems to work best. I don't know if, you know, we have enough contrast gap here to really play with these and get much result out of them, but it'll be worth trying. And then over here, we're going to be picking out different panels and different areas of the wing and essentially seeing how these different shades play off of each other in a more uh, solid fashion. So let's get to it and let's start with MRP5. See the compressor's raring to go. Ah. That's why you don't just leave paint open. This seems so pointless. Let's say that the center section here is a different metal or something, and so it's painted this shinier black. Pretty good deep black we got going there. So next up we're going to do some NATO black.
Next up on the hit parade, we've got Night Camo Black. Okay, last and possibly least, it's time to do our blend coat of tire black. So I've already done World War I night camo black right in here blended, and I think it came out actually pretty decently. Over here is a whole different story. Uh, we'll talk about that in the wrap up. But for now, let's see how this goes. Okay, I believe that is good for some lessening. Okay, so coming out of the black on black bake off, I'm actually feeling quite good. Um, after the disappointment and lessons learned with the Hilo drab, this time around I was very careful to stick to putting darker colors underneath. And I mean, there's not that much room when you're dealing with black and not quite black. But at the same time, you know, with these various shades, the black, the night camo black, the NATO black, etc. There are plenty of different tones in those blacks to be laid down that are still darker than what we ended up using for the blend coat, which is um, tire black. So this is actually much more of a dark, dark, dark gray as opposed to the black, blue, black, etc. of some of the others. And the results, I think, came out quite well. Um, this is going to be a fun one for the camera sensor to try to pick up, but so over here, let's start over here. So this is the marble side. And as you can see, wow, hello, overexposure. Oh, well, that'll help make it visible. So as you can see though, there's plenty of tones going on in here where the tire black went down over the other shades. And I think it looks, you know, let's pull it back here. Now I think that looks quite good. Um, yeah, there's, there's tonality to it. There's depth, there's richness. And it looks black, but at the same time, it looks worn and a bit marbled. And here is the night camo black that I used as a blend coat. And it did the same. Um, I would say maybe not to the same degree, though. But, you know, it's still a very compelling color, and there's a lot of fun that can be had with it. But overall, I'm, I think, happier with the way the tire black laid out on there. Now this other side, I had the, the idea of picking out different panels and just doing that. And when I did that, at first it was really stark. Um, you really notice the difference. You can still see it peeping through here. Um, I ended up going back over this with a blend coat of tire black and it really tied everything together nicely, but you can even see just from here, you know, the difference between like, this is straight up black. And then we've got, um, you know, up here we've got the World War One night camo. Over here we've got NATO black, NATO black here. And it's a thing when, when they were just on their own, they were way too stark and it literally looked like black, really dark brown and a really, really dark blue. 
uh, but with the NATO black, or sorry, with the tire black over over top of them, it toned down those hues just enough to where it really looks the part as well. I mean, you've got you know a lot of character going on in that black. I mean, let's just for comparison's sake, here's a. Yeah, you can see. I mean, one is black, just straight up black. The other one has a lot more tonal range to it, a lot more visual interest, even when the camera's overcompensating like nobody's business. Now, just to be fair here, here we can see these two guys side by side, and the tire black is noticeably lighter. And even you know, this is insane overexposure, but. The tire black is definitely noticeably lighter than this black, so you do have to play it a bit carefully here, but at the same time, I think you know it's worth it for the extra tonal range that you get, and especially considering that a lot of these aircraft we're talking about, the F-117 in particular, are not really straight up black aircraft. They have that very, very dark gray thing going on, and in fact, the trumpeter manual even suggests using tire black to paint them. So. Where does this leave us? Well, oh, hold on, almost dropped that guy. Let's set him down. Well, ultimately, it means that you have a ton of options when you are painting a uh, weathered black aircraft. You know, whether it's a P-61, the ones I've been mentioning, like the X-15, the F-117. There are many routes you can take. It all depends on what the aircraft looks like, how worn it is, um, how far skewed and shifted it is from straight black. But... You know, I mean, whether you're modeling it like this and you want that kind of, I mean, you know, I see this panel in here and I just cry because that is perfect for the F-117. And that is literally, you know, I have reference photos that look exactly like that. Over here, this kind of thing might be perfect for something like the X-15 where it had, you know, definitely distinct shifts between different parts of its body. So either way... You know, this idea of putting dark, you know, putting a black base and then dark, almost black colors as the marble or sort of the foundational coat and then coming over with something that's a bit shifted away from black, you know, the tire blacks of the world works really, really well. And uh, yeah, essentially don't fear black. There's a lot to play with here. You might even want to consider if you're doing something like a, a Mosquito or a Lancaster where they inf infamously had that black underside for the night raids. Um, you may want to consider using something like a NATO black as the base because that more brown shifted, green shifted tone would really work well to pull in that idea that it's reflecting, you know, the grass and dirt and stuff underneath it while it's parked. Similarly up top, you may want to consider something more of like a blue black, you know, especially if you're doing an all black, something like a, uh, like a mosquito NF2 just to give that tonal shift between the underside and the uh, and the upper fuselage and upper wings. So just an idea. Either way, uh, the key takeaway here is black, almost black, and then slightly shifted, slightly, ever so slightly lighter, um, not quite blacks, the tire blacks of the world, uh, is a great recipe. However you choose to lay down that mid middle coat is a great recipe for getting some good if subtle, tonal variation and contrast variation in your black. So with that, we're going to move on to the next test, and thanks for watching. Later.